Hey guys, it's Dr. Sebastian from Dulles. Today I'm gonna to go over how the spine is affected with flexion as well as compression by a image. Enjoy. This video is going into one of the graphics that I created here. Um, let's see if we can get a preview for you guys. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in on this baby. All right, it doesn't, oh, there you go. Sorry, I'm still learning the Zoom software here. Okay, so the reason why I thought we should do this is because I want you to, everyone to understand uh, what goes on with the disc uh, with different types of injuries. Now, uh, I'm gonna draw a couple things on the screen here. And first thing I want you to realize is that we have, in the compressive effect, all right, this is when you're lifting heavy, when you're deadlifting, when you're squatting and so on, and all of a sudden you feel a, a pop, all right? This is typically uh, what happens here. We call this a vertical herniation. Now, let me describe really quickly what's going on on the screen here. This circle area, which I should just fill in. Let's fill this thing in. Yeah, let's put it in yellow. So this thing right here is the nerve. Here's another picture of the nerve. Now we have, <clears throat> let's go with blue. Blue is our jelly. This is the jelly of the donut. And this thing, in the ones where it goes pop, it goes vertical, it actually goes into the bone above. And all that spotted area is bone right there. And around the sides here, we have what we call the nucleus. Uh, let's, let's, let's undo that one. Okay, we have the nucleus right there. The nu or, uh, sorry, the annular fibers. The annular fibers of the disc these are uh, these dense rings that actually protect this jelly from escaping out either side. Now, if it escapes, then there's going to be a lot of pain. And even if it doesn't escape, there's not always a lot of pain. Now, one area of concern with people with, the, with uh, or one area of concern, but also uh, one thing that people don't quite understand with these vertical herniations is, so we have right here, we have that nerve again, okay? And if this herniation is happening upwards, they're like, well, it's not compressing on the nerve, so how is it creating leg pain? Now, let's just consider this right here. I made a little area right here, which is, uh, let's just say it's the, uh, another part of the bone, or you can see this line right here, right? So this area right here is, um, is other bony architecture in the area, and it could be a variety of different things, but we're not getting too specific to what it is right now. Now what happens here is notice the height on this right here. See how tall this thing is, just vertically? And you look at this one, it's shorter. So what happens here is this disc flattens and then that bony area sits right on top of the nerve right there, which irritates people severely. Now in situations like this one, which are more of a flexion effect, we have these herniations that kind of go to the side and they just work their way um, out of the fibers of the disc anyways. Um, there's an area uh, really close to the disc, which is uh, where the nerve is located. Now, we can have chemical, see those little dots? That's a chemical response right there. Let's see if I can zoom in even more. Okay. Hey, what the heck? The things move. Let's clear the whole screen right there. Okay. So, right here is the nerve again. And then around it, you can have all these little chemical responses we're going to show by the yellow. And this happens just because this area right here is just so pissed off, right? It's not supposed to be doing that. And that happens with bending over repeatedly. Uh, let's change to a different color. So repeated bending often creates this type right here. This, this one down here usually comes from compressive load, which happens from a lift, um, or picking up something which you're not ready for or ready for it. Um, obviously, they happen differently, but they both uh, hurt like hell. So just remember that uh, lifting is not really, it's not bad for you. It's just you have to do it well. Now, when we come over to the other stuff, all right, let's move over. Let's go a little bit more into that flexion and tolerance, which you're gonna see on this side right here. Notice that this area, notice that this area right here, there still is some space here, okay? 
we go into this side and see how that disc right there is now kind of pinching or touching, pressurizing onto that nerve. I'll paint that nerve. Let's just, let's just paint that dude again. I think the yellow really stands out. It stands out to me anyways. Okay, so there's a the nerve right there. And notice that this, this area right here is just pressuring on it. Okay, so that physical pressure on it can create pain. And we're going to just highlight a couple parts right here which create this thing again, because this is important to realize. Repeated flexion and rounding. I know people call different things, but uh, rounding or having poor posture with sitting, walking, um, sleeping, or lifting can create these conditions right here. Uh, the nucleus slowly works its way through the rings, and then it sensitizes the nerve. You'll end up getting things like tight hamstrings, sciatica, back pain, and that phantom IP, IT band syndrome right here, which is important, which I will have a graphic on coming later. Um, I wrote some arrows right here because notice that the, it's not always just rounding, but it can also be relative rounding. And to really understand that, I'm going to draw another picture here. So if this thing tilts back, oh, it's a horrible arrow. If this thing tilts back like that, the stuff on top of it will relatively curve like this, which then will allow this stuff to push back, which then creates pressure on that. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So look at this picture over here where this guy, where this guy right here, it doesn't, he's a little bit more upright and the pressures right here are vertical in nature. And that's why I'll create that hernia, uh, vertical herniation. This one, because we have this, this tilting, this posterior tilt or that butt wink when people say in lifting, it creates more of a straightness of the spine which then allows this uh, pressure on the nerve root to increase with mechanical loading of this area of the disc. And let's go to stop sharing. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So the point of that is again, just to reiterate is that you can have different types of disc injuries. They happen from different mechanics. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world. They just have different timelines of healing. Okay. But as I said on that other picture, that second picture is that you can have that tightness of the hamstring, the IT band syndrome and all things, all the things like that, which people tend to chase this pain. They foam roll the hell out of this thing and it doesn't really get better for a lot of people. For some it will. But it's important to realize the neurology in the area, the nerves as they come down, they can, they can be screaming at you to look at the area above. And I'm not the first person to look at uh, disc or spine with, with a lot of uh, different types of conditions because there's local things which can occur too, like muscle tears, uh, IT band syndrome can really happen. But a lot of times when I see with people, they're extremely frustrated because they come in here. And they say, well, I've been having this for a long time. I keep foam rolling and it's not working. I'm cutting my miles. It's just, it's just not working. Or you get someone who is a lifter and they say they have IT band syndrome and they don't have the mechanics or they don't have the repetition for the friction syndrome. They possibly have a nerve root irritation, which can be easily corrected if we just implement the right steps. Now, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Share with a friend. Uh, I'm doing these videos every single day this year. Not exactly like this, but some similar to it. Uh, I will put a link below for more information on uh, low back conditions and uh, some tips that I like to give people how to sit, how to, how to uh, uh, get out of a chair, how to drive, how to sleep, how to get off the ground, and also some lifting mechanics to improve the hip function, which would be deadlifting in this, in this case. Um, there's a whole podcast I have with Stuart McGill on there as well, um, as well as a couple other experts I think that you guys will really enjoy. So go to the links below, check it out, share with a friend, and tell me what you think. See you guys.